please stand? Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Acts, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 32nd verse. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. For as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what they was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Let us read Psalm 133 together. Oh, how good it is and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard on the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing of life for every man. Our second reading is from the first book of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our own eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not what is true, but if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us 
from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Not only for ours, but only for also the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we're able to stand for the gospel, the holy gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hand and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them, and Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. In the name of God the Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer of us all, Amen. Now you liturgical gurus know what this Sunday, the first Sunday after Easter, has become to be known as what? Oh no. No liturgical gurus here. What? Huh? No liturgical gurus here. There's no gurus here for those. You know. Low Sunday. Yes, yes. Oh yeah. Low you know that. <laughs> but you know, you don't you don't behave like the typical church. You're still all here. Oh. Low Sunday, you see the C and E Christians have already made their debut, right? Yeah. Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> you know, I've made my I, I showed up on Easter. I've I've done my duty for a while. Now I can go back to whatever I was doing, right? I don't need to show up on this second Sunday after Easter, you know. Right? Right. Right. So they all stay home. You know, I dare say that the, the first Sabbath after the resurrection as far as the disciples and those closest friends that Jesus were, was not considered low Sunday. You know what I mean? For us, maybe the exuberance and the 
fanfare of Easter morning and all the excitement that goes along with this has waned by the time we get to this day a week later. But I dare say for the disciples and those closest to Jesus, that was the, that was the last thing that was going on with them. Try to imagine where they were emotionally and spiritually. We get a little taste of it in today's gospel lesson. We have the, the famous, infamous, infamous rather, story of Doubting Thomas. The poor guy has gotten a, a bad rap. Who here among us would not have felt the same way Thomas felt? All of us probably have had our doubts. Show me, right? Show me. I need to see. I need to believe. I need to know it to be true. You know? You know when after the resurrection, those first few days, obviously something quite dramatic happened. And I would dare say that life was never the same again. It was a little bit like, you know, you cannot unring a bell. You know, once the bell is rung, it's rung. And that's the way I think about the resurrection at Easter. The bell was rung, and there was no silencing the ring that came from that bell. Have you ever taken time to read and study just a little bit of a, even in a superficial way, what happened to all the disciples following the resurrection? Where they went, where they ended up, and how they died? Ever done that? You know how almost all of them died how? It's a tragic, violent death. With the exception of John. Even though he was punished severely for his beliefs, he was, you know, he was exiled to this little island called Potmos. He worked in the mines there for a while. He was at, I think they actually attempted to boil him to death, but somehow he survived that, and he is the only one who got a natural death. The rest of them, were crucified or killed brutally. You know, I've been reading reports, maybe you have too, and some research is being done. You know, for the first time in the United States, that the, the number of Christians attending church has dropped below what percent? Fifty percent. We are now at a place in our society in which less than fifty percent of Americans in church. FYI, you know, your vestry right now is in the midst of researching and studying a book. We're going to have a report given to the vestry by a couple of our members this Wednesday night about how we proceed here at St. Joseph's with the growth and development of our ministry and of course with the calling of a new rector at some point in time. And they made a comment in our last vestry meeting, which I thought was quite telling, and that is that the normative church now, in the Episcopal Church, is a part-time ministry. Is that right? Where's Susan? She here? Is that right, Susan? Did I get that right? That's normative now. That's normative. And there's some other startling statistics that suggest that, you know, if things don't really shift, 
and the way we do ministry, that, and how many years will those churches pass away? Ten years? Eight years? Somewhere in there? Ten years? The reason I bring that up is not just to share with you what's going on with the vestry here at St. Joseph, but also to challenge us a little bit and ask ourselves, and I don't mean this in a critical, I really don't, judgmental way, but in a reflective, thoughtful way, what, what do you think is going on in our society and culture? What does it mean that that's happening in our world today? When I, when I contrast the experiences, the experiences that, that I learn about and know about from the first early Christians and what's going on in today's world, I, I have a hard time reconciling that. We gotta make light of low Sunday. the unique opportunities that any church has when they go through transitions is to evaluate and to and to thoughtfully and prayerfully consider how you're going about the exercise of your ministry as a Christian. It is a wonderful time to be reflective and to ask some pretty hard questions. To ask yourself, where do we go from here? Now, the churches I've served in, and the, the, the average age of the congregate is certainly more than 50 right you're more than 50 and some of the responses to that reality when i'm in conversation with folks is oh my goodness we gotta get some young folks in here And I've never thought that was the, was a, quite the right way of going about reflecting on that. Man, are you over the hill? Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> over 50. Jim, you over the hill? Over 50, barely. <laughs> Anyone here not over the hill? Yes. <laughs> we got three. You're never over the hill. Seriously. When was the last time, and you had a exuberant, novel thought? Don't tell me never. A week ago. <laughs> David, when was the last time you had a novel sort of an at least semi-inspirational notion or thought. Friday. Friday. There you go. Susan, <laughs> when was the last time you felt moved by something that just made your blood race a little harder? About a week ago. Right over here. My point is what? We all have ideas. We're all inspired by the Spirit. There's opportunity here that I would suggest that we've not recognized yet, maybe. Yes, the institutional church may be changing. 
it may be something that's um, I won't say archaic completely but there is a challenge before not just St. Joseph's but our society as a whole <laughs> is to ask some thoughtful deep questions about how is the spirit moving in the early church did we follow the resurrection of Jesus in those early moments of the church the excitement the exuberance was so powerful that there was no doubt that those members of that community would sacrifice their life for it. That's what they did. That's what they did. And I dare say that everyone here has something that they know is worth sacrificing your life for. And I think the church as a community of people, like St. Joseph's, needs to ask the question, what is our reason for being? True, what is our reason for being here? Well, the challenge before this church and any church is to open our hearts and minds to what I would consider allowing the Spirit of God to move in maybe a novel way. That does not mean letting go of the history or dismissing the history at all. It means asking the question of, since we're here and we've been sustained by the love of God and the sacrifice of Christ to bring us to this moment, in our life, in our life as a church, where is it and to what is that same spirit calling us now? In my opinion, this is not Low Sunday. Not Low Sunday. Maybe we ought to give it a different name different name of what it truly represents to us as a community here at St. Joseph. I invite your thoughts and prayers for the church and for the vestry. We meet Wednesday night to continue a conversation about where God is leading us. Keep the vestry in your prayers. This can be a very exciting and interesting time. Those novel ideas that you have are important. It's very important. Now stand as we're able to recite the words of the Nicene Creed and to affirm that which we believe and hold dear. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God and God light from light, true God from true God, the God not made, from one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For 
For our sake he was crucified and brought his title. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will run again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead. The response for the prayers of the people are hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that for your, your will for them may be fulfilled. We pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Are there any special intercessions or thoughts or prayers you'd like to offer at this time? Pray for Dorothy. Pam and Jerry. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us now humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen our goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. May be seated, please. Let's take a moment and share any community news. 
Um, as I mentioned in my homily, uh, the vestry is meeting Wednesday night at 6. Yep, 6. 6. Um, Susan and, and Debbie, right? Patty. Patty, sorry. Uh, are going to facilitate a conversation. Uh, there's a book study that's been done by the, through the diocese. Uh, name that book again, Susan. Part time is plenty. Great title, um, which addresses the, the particular needs of not just St. Joseph's but a lot of churches. And it, I think it's going to be a creative uh, and spirited discussion. It will be something that continues on. We don't know exactly how long we'll proceed, but we are we're, we're moving into what I would consider a more formal discussion now around transition. Until now, we've been sort of just treading water because of the, the this terrible virus. But I think we're gonna come out the other side and um, this spring we'll, we'll have some fruitful conversations and the ministry will do, uh, will keep everyone informed and um, keep us and everyone in your thoughts and prayers. Anything else need to be shared? Just a follow up on our home visit. We had a, a great visit and we're Basically, a home uh, visit. Foster care. foster care, right? Could you hear that? No. You're uh, you're gonna become foster parent. Yes. My mother. Yes. When she worked for the state of Alabama, and her career, she placed over 1,500 babies in foster for foster care for adoption. 1,500. Wonderful ministry. Thank you. Anything else that you'd be sure? Walk in love as Christ loved us. He gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. As we're able to stand, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good. And joyful thing always, never to give thanks to the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed he that comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. And the calling of Israel will be your people.
And your word spoke with other prophets, and above all, and the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you have sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error, and to truth, out of sin, and to righteousness, out of death, and to life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he gave thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts. They may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Joseph and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of the By him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory. Be all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us, Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are holy gifts for holy people.
spirit blows where it wills. We have another liturgical challenge, right? Minor at best. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have grace to accept us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and your better spiritual food and the sacrament of the body of Christ. Send us down to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sins of heart through Christ our Lord. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds and the knowledge of love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. to learn, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.